Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we are back with another exciting episode of Silent Hunter 5. Where we last left off, um... Let's hit the map, instead of me sitting here holding my coffee pontificating. Like some sort of coffee-holding pontificator. Uh, where we last left off, we went over to uh, Scapa Flow and taught them a lesson. Oh, bloody hell, there's a Nelson. Uh, we got time. I hate to make this series just me running back and forth. I... <laughs> To scap a flow. I do have a score to settle with the Nelson. Another time. Um, basically, we got what is it? March nineteenth. We got April 9th? I don't know if we've got enough time to head back into Willemshaven resupply and then select that mission. Um, we could certainly give it a try. The thing is, uh, we've got. I, I just refueled everybody. So we got a fresh load of torpedoes, we got a fresh fuel tank sitting there ready. What I'm thinking of doing is just heading up here and um, sinking some ships. But, like I say, Narvik's not exactly... Well, they're friendly. They're friendly at the moment. Now, there might be British ships going in and out of there that I could hit. Uh, and I think, honestly, that might be a good thing to check out. So we'll head up there. Hmm. I'm just thinking. So bear with me while I mull things over. I should have, should have come up with a plan before hitting that record button, but you know what? No. You guys gotta sit here and enjoy my creative process. Uh, it's... well, I'm... toying things over in my brain. As always, if you're interested in what mods I'm using, check the description in episode 1. Because that's where they're listed. So, there you go. Right, okay. Well, we can't... We might have enough time, actually, to make a run to the southwestern approaches. Would we? This is April 9th. Which wouldn't give us a lot of time. <sighs> so many things to consider. And I need to consider them probably off camera. Otherwise, it's going to be me sitting here uh, for pretty much all of the episode trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And I don't think that would be all that interesting. Yeah, probably wouldn't be so... I'm going to be back with a plan. See you guys in a bit. All right, here's the plan. We're heading up to Norway, and we're going to wait this out. So, uh, hopefully, there won't be too much of a break in the action for you guys. But I have a feeling time acceleration is going to become my friend. I just, I can't think of a better way to do this. Because, um, I mean, really, April is going to come up. Pretty freaking quickly. Um, and the deadline's the 9th. So that's the day the invasion starts. Which kind of confuses me a little bit. I would have imagined... I'm just going to turn the volume down in my speaker headphones. My speaker headphones. My headphones. Uh, hopefully the game isn't too loud. Uh, I haven't adjusted settings since episode 2. But you never know. Stranger things have happened. If it is, I'm sure everyone will let me know. So, um, yeah, I, it's just, it's, it's weird that the deadline's the day of the invasion. It doesn't give me a lot of time to sit there and uh, do some hunting. Well, Norway is considered an enemy. So, I figure we get up there as quick as we can and then just hang out. Uh, sink any British ships we happen to see that are up there, because that should count towards um, attacking ships within the Narvik area of operations. And attack the British ships entering Norway's territorial waters. It should count. Uh, and if I get them within that circle, it should count for both. Which would be super groovy. I would be okay with that. Um, how quick are we going? We're going 18 knots, going speed 3. We can Slow tone that down. Basically, with the whole speed thing, right? I mean, the idea is twofold. Uh, you can run at speed 3, which is going to burn the same amount of fuel as it always does, I believe. This is all conjecture, by the way. I haven't looked into this, I haven't researched this, this is just what I've cooked up in my head. So, 
Um, you can go in on speed three, which will always burn the same amount of fuel, but as you upgrade uh, Willy, you know, you're going to get more speed out of your engines. So, you know, that could be that could be good. Or you could take the other route and you could go like, you know, ahead speed two, burn less fuel and um, basically go the same amount of speed. So if I remember correctly, unupgraded stock U-boat that we're running, uh, half speed ahead is roughly around 13 knots. And that's now what we're getting out of speed two, which should be six. So we're getting double plus one um, speed if we just go ahead slow. So what that's gonna do is save fuel. Now, I know, we're in a situation where we don't really need to save fuel, right? I mean, if you take a look at it, uh, any area in here, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be able to get resupplied, no problem. Make it back to port, fill up the tanks, not a concern. But if anybody saw season one, and I would imagine quite a few people did, uh, you know fuel's a concern. You know fuel gets tricky, and we don't ever want to run out, ever. So, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get into the habit now of having good fuel management. And, um... We are in shallow waters, Captain. I think that should be good. Looks like all our tubes are ready. We're all set. I think that's enough of me rambling, to be quite honest. I shouldn't, you know, be chugging back coffee first thing in the morning. Just rambling. So, whatever. Anyway, I'm going to see you guys when we get up to Norway, and hopefully we get some targets right away. If not, we'll just be um, waiting around. You know, we'll, uh, we'll do some tests. That's what we'll do. We'll do some training drills to get the crew really set for diving and stuff like that. Anyway, see you guys in a bit. All right, so we haven't even got up to my area of operations, and already we're coming into uh, British shipping. Now, this guy probably hasn't seen us yet. We got two courses of action. As you can see, I was crawling down the deck thinking, hey, now's a good time to get a torpedo shot off on. But, thank you for that. Um, it's just a lone ship. So, we could dive in and sink it with a torpedo, or we could use our guns. And the reason why I'm thinking guns is not a bad idea, we've got a destroyer escort. Um, not sure if we can pick him up yet. Uh, we got him around here. Just sort of started to tail us. I'm not going to complain. I say the more deck guns or the more surface guns we can get on this freighter, the better. So we'll just approach and uh, I think we'll just hit him with the guns. That'll be the easiest way to do it. Now, he is headed not directly at me. So, I'm just going to adjust our course just course a little bit. Three, two, degrees. And about like that. New course, four, one, degrees. Just straighten her out. And that should set us on a good intercept course. And we can probably Minimum drop speed our speed ahead. down to uh, one. Really. And just get in nice and close. That destroyer is pulling circles. That usually means there's a submarine about, but I don't I don't know if we're gonna be coming across any sort of English submarines. I kind of hope not. Although, you know, submarines aren't really a threat to other submarines. Uh, one of the one question I had in the comments was, "Can you sink another submersible?" I think you can, um, if you're lucky or skilled enough to do it. I don't think I'm either, so just keep that in mind. Don't be expecting Wolfram here to be uh, sinking any, sinking any uh, enemy submarines. So we got our weapons set, high explosives. I want to try something. There's two things I want to try. One, don't shoot anything. And this is going to be a little tricky. Um, yes, sir. Uh, don't man anything. I had a request to hit freighters with the anti-aircraft gun. I'm all for it. I don't know how I'm going to pull it off, though. I'll tell you that much. Uh, let's just... Here, let's... 
That guy's looking nice and close. So let's see. Give me that. Spin it around. And I don't think I can shoot through my crew. So, we're going to have to pull some crazy maneuvers here. We're going to have to go like that. Course, three, one, nine degrees. Okay. So. Let's see. It helps if I hit the ship. I do realize this, of course. But I'm not sure if these are actually going to be doing anything. Or if they're even hitting. Or if they'll show up here as potential hits. Now I'm sure there's some... Oh, those are definitely hitting. Alright. Let's go scope things out. I'm sure there's lots of you out there who are like, man, what a, what a horrible waste of uh, ammunition. <clears throat> I'm not concerned. At the moment, the Royal Air Force doesn't really seem to be doing anything. They're just doing their flights with their hurricanes. Um, so yeah, so that's not really a concern. Once we have to start facing bombers, then I can guarantee you I will not be wasting ammunition uh, on freighters. Anti-aircraft ammunition on freighters. But yeah, I mean, like, those things are hitting, but I'm not sure they're doing any damage. So, for those wondering, yeah, you can hit. You can hit anything. But, uh, is it worth it? Probably not. Alright. Let's get in our aimed view. And I really don't think that guy is that far out. Um, let's... Let's find out, in fact. Wish that destroyer would come in and start helping, but you know, you can't you can't win them all. So about a click and a half. About like that. Let's pull this back around. And uh unload on them, shall we? Could probably come down just Wow. There we go. Click and a half. Not two and a half clicks. Maybe up a little bit. There we go, now we got some explosions going on. And in fact, we'll just stop the ship. The only thing we've got to be concerned about <clears throat> approaching like this is that freighter ramming us. And, um... You know, we're gonna want to make sure it dies before that could happen. And I don't think that's gonna be any problem. I'm also amazed that this guy, that this guy is um, still alive. Because there is an awful lot of uh, fire and explosions going on on this guy's ship. Now come on, that's gotta end it, right? I mean, really, the reason why I'm doing the shooting here and why we got so close is because I just want to make sure we don't expend too much ammunition sinking this freighter. There we go. I don't know how long that guy's been there. I got into a zone where I was just looking at my ship. Or looking at looking at this ship. Being all on fire and stuff. Alright, let's uh, return to course. Returning speed 2. Course. Speed 2. Slow Thank you. Let's go check out the freighter. Ho 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 ho! 
Did we ever pull a number on this guy? So, uh, yeah, let this be a lesson that I've learned now. When using high explosive ammunition, get as close as you possibly can. Because you're going to light him up quick. I think we only expelled something like 20 rounds, roughly. Which, um, is still quite a lot. And one of these days, before I re start recording when I'm in port, I'm going to remember to set up the mod that uh, gives you, like, realistic ammunition loadouts so that I'm not stuck with just 100 rounds of high explosive and 120 rounds of armor piercing, which isn't enough. If 20, 20 rounds takes out a freighter, you know, that's five freighters with high explosive rounds on your deck gun, and you don't really want to be attacking a freighter with armor piercing. And in fact, if I could make the choice, I would never load armor piercing on my sub. I would just have high explosive. Because you're not going to be shooting at an armored ship with your deck gun. Unless, you know, you feel like being suicidal for some crazy ass reason. It's all going to be high explosive because freighters aren't armored. So, that's my two cents on that. But, you know, that's never really going to happen. So, there you go. Uh, I also had a request, in case you're wondering why I'm sitting here just looking at the ship, to watch more ships sink. I know it was kind of a, um, kind of a feature of Season 1, and I haven't really been doing it that much with Season 2. Reason being is it takes a lot of time. I'm kind of just sitting here watching a ship sink. Um, yeah. So, the, which is cool. Like, I like watching the ship sink, don't get me wrong, that's one of the huge things that I like to do in this game. The only thing for me as as a personality doing a Let's Play series it's tough to find things to talk about while a ship sinks. So yeah. That's 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 kind of why I haven't been doing it as much. But, you know, there's been requests. So I will happily give the people what they want. Um, and this guy's looking like he's a pretty big ship too. Fitting in I mean, I, I've purposely placed the camera so that it covers the entire screen, but, you know, it's still a big ship. We should uh, check on that, actually. What were you worth, oh freighter? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> it's not a big ship at all, I just, I'm zoomed in way too much. It's a Hog Island Type A for 4,000 tons. almost hit shift X and you gotta be careful you know with the shift keyboard commands you never know oh look at that that's the kind of shot that I like get in there actually yeah there we go see the Prometheus cruise past her kill thankfully in the tiger stripes I'm glad the stripes showed up today they add a little je ne sais quoi to my sub that I just I don't know makes it feel better Plus, I noticed running around the deck, we're riding a little bit high in the water, and I like it because it shows the bulge on either side. Nerdy things amuse me. Anyway, let's get this guy under. Any time. Taking his, taking his sweet time, but about to go. A nice level sinking. It's rare that I get those. So uh, when I do, you know, you got to appreciate. You got to appreciate the finer points of that. Right? Like, we distributed damage so evenly on this ship that it's sinking as it floated. Which is pretty cool. Anyway, let's get out of the cheaty view. And uh, let's see. Did that ship count for anything? No. No, it didn't. So that was just... It was just pride, is what that was. Uh, so what we want to do then is get up into this... The Narvik area of operations and start looking for ships there. Now, we could probably go out there, but I doubt that there's too many ships headed to Murmansk these days. Um, most of the traffic is going to be going into Narvik, I think. I'm assuming. I could be wrong. Happened once before. I don't like being reminded of it. Anyway, guys, we'll see you when I got something more exciting to share with you guys. See you in a bit. 
Sometimes this game does baffle me. Uh, this destroyer has been following us. It's basically Bergen. And uh, now that we're taking up a position of just kind of stopping, as you can see, this guy's just pulling circles. So for whatever reason, the game decided to assign us a destroyer escort, which I do appreciate. Don't get me wrong. I likes that it did that. But, um, you know, it seems kind of pointless now because this guy's just going to spin in circles. Presumably until the invasion of Norway and we move again when there's a chance it'll just get sunk by uh, British sur surface ships because it's just following a submarine and it's just a destroyer. Anyway, as this guy pulls the circles and you can see, because we're so far north, it's got the beautiful icicles and, um, you know, all the cold weather details, which I love. It's the little things like this that I just absolutely love in the game. My one complaint about it is that it doesn't happen on our submarine. Why not? Our submarine's in the cold water, too. In fact, considering it's a submersible, you would absolutely expect to have icicles all over the thing because it's going to be in and out of the water like mad. Anyway, we've taken up a position uh, basically blockading the port of Narvik. And um, we're in the deep. Well, the deep, quote unquote. I probably didn't need to put that in quotes. 236 meters is plenty deep. So um, basically what we're going to do is just set up a blockade. And by setting up a blockade, I mean... We're going to sit here <laughs> and uh, probably go under and then just engage ships as they come through. Uh, I would like to go further in, of course, because then we could get closer to the port. But eventually, <clears throat> for reasons unknown to me, the BDU doesn't actually include the port of Narvik in the Narvik area of operations. It cuts off. So, um, well, I mean, really, we could set up a point like here and prevent really anything com from coming through. But I think up here is going to be better. Besides uh, it being deeper, it's closer to being able to turn around and start sinking ships over this way once the time comes. So I don't know when the declaration of war goes to Norway, but I know the invasion itself happened, started on the 9th. So, um, you know, between the declaration and things happening, you know, uh, between the declaration and things happening, let's be a little less uh, vague about things. Between the declaration of war and this mission ending, I don't know how much time I'm going to have. Unfortunately, I don't remember from the previous series, and while I could go back and watch the previous series, it's a little bit more fun. Adds a little bit of um, a sense of urgency to just, you know, have to do it on our own. So, yeah, that's that's the plan. We're just going to set up the blockade, and then, um, what is it today anyway? It's the 23rd of March, so we got some time to sit and wait and let, um, you know, British ships come our way and sink them. Shut down so, diesel engines. Current well, we're... One, zero meters. That was quick, boys. I appreciate that. Keep going down under. And, um, yeah. When we get a target, I'll be sure to share it with you guys. See you in a bit. All right, guys. So uh, not much time has passed, and we've got our first target. Um, I'm tempted to use the rear-facing tubes here <clears throat> just because uh, basically we can, although this guy might not be in the best position for getting a shot off with these tubes. Uh, just your standard bog standard freighter. Nothing too magical about them. Now, I'm thinking if I back up, then we're just going to go that way. <clears throat> I don't know if we're actually going to intercept this guy. So we might not be able to use the rear facing tubes, which is fine. New waypoint, course 47. What we'll do is just reposition ourselves so that we're going to face him frontwards and then just hit him with the gun. 
So there, we can surface. We'll drop our speed down to speed one. We don't need to be going quickly to do this. <clears throat> All right, we're on the surface. Recharging batteries. There he is. Can I not get my binoculars? That is a concern. I'm worried. There we go. So there she be. About. Just over two kilometers out. So we'll get on the gun. I'll be doing the shooting when we uh, engage these single freighters. We got 77 rounds left. <clears throat> That's, um, you know, plenty to sink another couple of freighters. That's for sure. But we're looking at just over two kilometers out. Try and get this in the rear section. It was definitely a hit. I'm going to put it up a little bit higher. Basically, what we want with the high explosive shells is for them to land on the deck and not in the hull. And I think these are landing in the hull. Because we're not getting many explosions. So let's switch to sort of aiming center. We can pull it up two and a half. I don't know about that. We're definitely landing on the deck. But I don't think... Yeah, it could be... Mm. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. I don't want to go over the ship, obviously. We want to actually hit this thing. But, I'd <laughs> I would also like these things to be doing a lot more damage. can bring it in just a little. And anytime these high explosive shells want to start, you know, doing some high exploding, high exploding, high exploding. I don't know how many shells I wasted, but that guy's sunk. So that's good news. Whoops. We can resume. We can cut our speed. Oh, Not stop. that, you know, we're traveling all that quickly. Get on up. Get back under. That. And let's go scope this guy out. Lots of fire. Not too much damage, but... I'm not gonna say my choice placement of high explosive shells is what caused this freighter to sink with just a few shots. But I have a feeling it was my special placement of high explosive shells that caused this freighter to sink with so few shots. Something Max has yet to learn, and unfortunately, I don't think he'll ever learn it. Uh, but I think this is just another bog-standard hog freighter. Let's check the logs. Nope, this one was a yukel. 4,000 tons. So, I mean, we're not getting a lot of tonnage. Engage electric motors. Recharging batteries. <clears throat> Current depth but as you can see, we don't zero. need a lot of tonnage for this bar to fill up. So, that's good. I don't know why this wasn't considered attacking ships within Narvik area of operations. It obviously was within the area of Narvik operations, but I'm guessing that this means uh, military ships, which is really what I'm saving the torpedoes for. So, let's just reposition ourselves. Minimum speed ahead. And uh, we'll wait for the next freighter. We'll go ahead and get rid of the get rid of the UI. There we go. <clears throat> and this guy's gonna be going under ass first, which is fine. You can see once it's underwater, we definitely did puncture through the hull in quite a few places. So that's exciting. Quite a few places. So yeah, 
High explosive shells. Don't aim for the water line with them. Aim for the ship above the deck and you'll sink your ship sooner, which I think makes sense just by the nature of the shells. If you know you're forced to use armor piercing, then absolutely aim for the water line, aim for the hull. Because in that situation, you're just hoping to punch holes through your ship or through your target and um, cause them to fill up with water. This way, you're hoping to just explode the ship and, um, you know, royally damage it in a bad way. So that's that's some history nerd shooting 101 for you. I don't know if it's helpful or not, but in this one case, it certainly seemed to be. All right, guys, I will see you when we've got another ship to sink. See you in a bit. All right, so Benno tells me we got two ships in front of us. So we're going to get on deck. Oh, no, 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 no. Recharging batteries. No, open. There we go. Oh, foggy day. <clears throat> we have no visual contact on these guys yet because it is such a foggy day. So let's just speed up some time. Ship sighted. Bearing three, five, zero. And just out there, dude's pretty close. I appreciate this, especially in the fog. Four clicks out, <clears throat> not really close enough, but I have a feeling these guys are going to be coming fairly close to me. So it's just a matter of being patient now and um, letting these guys get in as close as they can. Which, as you can see, Bearing three, four, eight. is very close. Now, the concern, of course, with having freighters get this close is if any of them are armed, we are going to get shot. I don't like getting shot. So, um, what was that, about two clicks? Almost exactly two kilometers. So let's put it up a little bit, whoops, up a little bit, and see we can go up a bit more. Up a bit more. There we go. Those are the kind of shots I'm looking for. Lob it in. And this guy looks like it might be a tanker, which I appreciate even more. Let's keep fuel away from the Tommies. Yes. You guys weren't expecting this, were you? Of course, the Norwegian government would probably complain. About German U-boats sinking British ships uh, right in their territorial waters. But... Uh, I don't think the German diplomatic corps really cares that much. Considering what the future has in store for Norway. But that's just me. Now, this guy should be going down fairly soon. A little freighter can't survive too many explosions like that. So that's one. And it was... A Dale-class fleet oiler. 17,000 tons. That's got to be worth something. I appreciate that. So now we're just going to have to wait for ship number two to kind of get in range. And you can see this guy's doing exactly what I was concerned about ships doing. And that's coming in for a ramming course. Come on, give me control of the turret. And in fact, all things considered, I think we're going to switch to armor piercing. And see if we can just start punching holes in this guy's um, hull. Now... At some point, very soon...
Where did that shot go? Is this another big ship too? Looks to be. So I'm not sure how, you know, punching holes in the hull is going to be all that useful. We're going to be probably winding up going through quite a few armor-piercing shells here. And now that the guy isn't aimed straight for us, we can probably push it out a little bit more. It might be wise to switch back to high explosives. Or maybe not. I think that's two kills now. Yep, two kills. Beautiful. Let's go take a look. And yeah, this is just your bog standard hog freighter. This. This. A 17,000 ton fleet freighter? Or fleet tanker? Man, that's a good day. It's a good day to be Wolfram. And a crew of the Prometheus. There's two more ships. We've got to be getting really close to finishing the first half of this mission. Let's take a look. And we are. So, really, another oiler is all we're going to need to uh, complete this mission, I would bet. Well, complete the first half of this mission. And then we can just put ourselves in a position to intercept the British fleet. And um, call Operation Norway a complete success. So let's get down to periscope depth. And while we're doing that, you know, let's, let's, uh, come on. Take a look at the ships we sunk. So this one I'm happy with, absolutely. Take that, England. No oil for you. Shut down diesel engines. Recharging batteries. Current depth, one, zero meters. As those oil stores explode. And I wonder how did... I mean, obviously our armor-piercing shots worked out well here. We're not seeing any of the physical damage that we caused on that guy yet. Once it gets under, I imagine we'll be able to see all the holes we punched in the hull. But as you can see here, especially with it being an oil tanker, we didn't need to put any holes in the hull. Because, in my head anyway, again, I don't know if any of this is actually true for gameplay reasons or not. But if you've got a ship filled with oil and you hit the deck with high explosive rounds, it's going to be a bad day for that ship because it's freaking filled with oil or diesel fuel or anything. Any kind of high explosive action on this thing. It's a good day. All right. Well, we're getting closer. We're getting rig for silent running. I didn't really mean to rig for silent running, but hey, you know what? From silent running. Let's just do that. And uh, I'm going to be back when we've got some more ships to sink. And then hopefully we can get the first half of this mission completed before April. And without using any torpedoes, which would both be good things. See you guys in a bit. Good news! German fleet's here. New contact. Warship moving slow. Moving away. Bearing zero. Long range. So, I would imagine... Um... The operation's going to start kicking off soon. We've still got a few days. As you can see, it's only March 25th. But with the German fleet in operation around here, it's a good sign. Now, the only concern is, uh -huh, I hope they don't take all the kills. What I'm going to do then is, if they're going to be up around here, I'm going to position myself further back. So, in and around this area. Warship, moving slow. Moving away. Bearing three, five, two. Long range. Surface the boat. 352. That's still in front of us. <clears throat> so while the German fleet starts picking things off coming out of Narvik, I want to start picking things off coming into Narvik. So it's not going to be a huge redeployment, just really about there. Course one, seven, six. Returning to course. Ahead. Maybe th there. And then um, we'll just pick things off as they come our way. Come on, we're on the surface. Recharging batteries. So we got the Prometheus turned around. We don't need to be going that quick. Speed 2 should be fine. Let's check our systems. Fuel and battery levels are looking just fine. Compressed air is obviously going to come up now that we're on the surface. 
Uh, still a full load of torpedoes. And one last thing to check. Morbid curiosity, really. Is... The deck gun. 102 rounds of armor piercing, 38 of high explosives. So... We got a couple of freighters left still that we can sink with the gun, which is good. We don't want to waste torpedoes on those guys. And, uh, yeah. We'll get ourselves in position. See you guys in a bit. And all we really had to do was just turn around, basically. And we picked up another contact. Look at that. Another freighter. Battle stations, gentlemen. Of course, I don't mean, like, actually going to battle stations, either. I just mean... Hey, we got a contact. Let's do something about it. Now, this guy is real close. Can't see us yet, which is nice. Two clicks out. And there she be. We could go a little bit higher. Try and again lob these shots into the critical areas of the ship. As you can see with that second shot, boom. We've already started a fire. We've started two fires. This ship is not going to be lasting that long. Yeah, get your searchlights out. Now would be a good time to do that. Just don't return fire or anything. Please. I don't want to take damage. And that's that for that! Another freighter down. And again, expending far less ammunition as you try and um, lob those shots instead of slamming the high explosives into the hull. Looks like just another... Oh, this guy's not going to be worth much at all. Maybe 2,000 tons? 2,500 tons. So... I don't think that's going to give us a mission complete. Nope, but one more! One more ship and we should have it. So, um, let's go find that one last ship. See you guys in a bit. All right, so uh, after heading down here, I realized that this is a much better area to be hunting because it's a huge bottleneck. You get out here and ships could be coming from any which way out of range of your scanners or uh, hydrophones. But um, you get in here and there's only so far they can go. So, I've repositioned back here, and as you can see, we've picked up another target. <clears throat> so we're just going to get ourselves in position, uh, closer, obviously, to this guy. And we should be able to finish him off. And we are going fairly quickly, uh, but that's, you know, basically for intercept reasons. Again, I like this whole getting nice and close with the um, with the deck gun and high explosives. Can we like center that? Sometimes, man, this game. Okay, let's uh, cut speed. Let's drop this way down. I should have looked at this when I had a chance because that guy's about one and a half kilometers out. Give or take. We're going to want to ever on the side of shooting up. Lob those shots into the deck. Lob them into the superstructure. Easy with the waves there. Come on. A little bit higher. There we go. Now we got a fire started. We'll drop it just a little bit. No. What we'll do is we'll drop it just a bit for the rear and front sections. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. There we go. That's a good range for dropping them on the front and the back. Hey, 
hey, let's keep wasting high explosive ammunition on a ship that's sinking. Sounds like a great idea. So we'll take a look. We got that bar pretty much filled up. Uh, and by pretty much, I mean totally filled up. So that's great. It was... Another Yukul. So, that means we can get into a position now to intercept the British fleet. And again, I want to use the terrain to my advantage and um, sort of hammer home in the bottleneck. And we've, we've got tons of time left uh, before the fleet shows up, the British fleet shows up. So... <clears throat> Uh, basically, we're just gonna spin her around and face her this way. Like so. Uh, maybe back like this. Get into the deepest water we can. And prevent the British Navy from coming in to reinforce Narvik. That seems like a good plan to me. But! That will, of course, have to be in another episode. Let's get on the bridge, Wolfram. You don't need to be pretending to be Max. But I think today was a successful day. Um, look at that. That is just beautiful. Singing away. Let's investigate the damage before we go. Lots of fire. Which is good. And, uh, yeah. This guy's destined for the bottom. Just like quite a few freighters here. Needless to say, I think we taught the Brits a bit of a lesson in um, in U-Boat Hunting 101. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. So, thumbs up if you have enjoyed this episode. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. If you're interested in my kill totals, here they be. So, so far... Uh, this isn't obviously mission by mission, this is totals. We have 48 merchant ships, 26 warships, 610,000 tons, which is pretty impressive if I do say so myself. Uh, one failed mission, so screw you, Northwestern of Uh But we got two more, which we should be able to complete relatively easily and uh, call it a day. So, thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.